Welcome everyone to Gamer Mill. Today I've got an updated story on Intel's 10th gen release date, information on AMD's Ryzen 4000 and Ryzen 5000 desktop specs, and Comet Lake H versus Ryzen 4000 APUs. But first, check out today's sponsor, Drop. Formerly known as MassDrop, a group buy website with amazing deals on PC hardware. It's free to sign up, and if you do it today, you'll get $20 off your first drop made item. So head to the link in the description below. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, I have a bit of an update to a recent story. Originally, it had seemed Intel was set to announce their 10th gen processors on April 30th with a release date later. Then, I actually thought the embargo was lifted for April 30th, but that was just the press embargo, as according to WCCF Tech, the actual release and the embargoes lifted for reviews will come on May 27th. I'm assuming the later date is due to the thing that shall not be named, and hopefully that doesn't get pushed back even further. Fingers crossed. Next up for today, we have some information on AMD's upcoming Ryzen 4000 desktop CPUs, and even some information on Ryzen 5000. Starting things off, we have desktop Ryzen 4000. Remember, these are the next gen Zen 3 based processors, unlike the Ryzen 4000 mobile APUs, which are on Zen 2. Anyway, this leak comes from Adore TV, who's been right in the past as well as wrong, but of course, that's only based on the actual source they are using at any given time. Luckily, Adore TV seems pretty confident about these. Still, just make sure to have some skepticism. Anyway, what are we talking about here? Well, starting things off, we're looking at an average IPC increase of between 10 and 15%, and that's honestly not too far off from what we've seen in the past. I was hoping for a bit more considering AMD confirmed this was a full architectural redesign, but as they mentioned, Ryzen 3000 already had a pretty big jump. Either way, we know AMD is aiming for at least 7% every year, so 10 to 15 is definitely better, and remember, that doesn't include any increases in clocks from a potentially more mature node. Speaking of, this does confirm higher clocks, but the big thing discussed here is really interesting. According to their source, Zen 3 will use double the cores per CCX module. See, up until now, AMD has used four cores per module and two modules per die. This time, AMD is apparently set to use eight cores per module and one module per die. This leaves me with some concerns over yield rates, but anything that doesn't make the cut will likely be binned as a lower core Ryzen chip, so that should help. The performance implication here comes with AMD doubling the L3 cache on a single CCX. Of course, with half the modules, it ends up being the same amount, but it also means the latency will be reduced significantly as well. So Zen 3 could see a decent jump in multi-core performance, especially on, say, an 8-core CPU, given it only has one CCX. Basically, the only thing that's been holding AMD's Zen-based CPUs back will be significantly reduced in Zen 3. Also on Ryzen 4000, they're apparently set to release at the end of this year, or possibly early next year if something goes wrong. And while that's it for next gen, Adore TV also went over Zen 4, which is the upcoming architecture Ryzen 5000 processors will use. According to their source, Zen 4 will give us even more cores and a new socket. Of course, that's not unexpected since AMD only promised support for AM4 until 2020. Not only that, but they're apparently set to include an unbelievable 1 megabyte of L2 cache which will further help lower latency on the Zen platform. Basically, AMD has some big plans for upcoming CPUs in the coming years. Let's just say, I'm excited. Lastly for today, while this is a few days old, I had to go over the first real comparison between AMD's new Ryzen 4000 APUs and Intel's new Comet Lake H processors. This story comes from Notebook Check, who got exclusive access to benchmarks on Intel's new Comet Lake H processors. Now, really quickly, while they didn't get the highest end i9-10,980HK, they did get to see the i9-10,880H, but they compared it to AMD's lower TDP 4900HS, so I think it's a good comparison. Either way, starting things off, we have the single core scores of AMD versus Intel. And as you can see, Intel's processor just eases out over AMD's and Cinnabench R20. We're talking 2.6%. Now, it does do a decent bit better in Cinnabench R15, but when we look at multi-core scores, we see something very different. In Cinnabench R20, AMD's Ryzen 4900HS beats the 10,880H by over 26%. So we're talking a big difference here. 
In Cinebench R15, Ryzen only beats Intel by a few percentage points, but it's clear that AMD is definitely the multi-core champ when it comes to Cinebench. When we move to 3D Mark, we can see the difference is negligible with a 1% win by each. Basically, while Intel seems to have made an okay jump in performance, it's clear the numbers they marketed, like I discussed in this video, were only because the difference in GPUs that they used. Ultimately, AMD still seems to take the lead or stay right with their competitor. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for next gen Ryzen or are you still waiting on 10th gen Intel? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, and as always, have a great day.